All right, look, it's, it's last minute time here, just a few hours, a few short hours before the start of leg two, possibly the longest leg in this race, time-wise. And I've got Charlie Enright, the very proud and smiley young American skipper of Team Alpha Medica. Charlie, what's up, my brother? Yeah, it's good, good. Here, pan to the, uh, pan to the over there and show everybody what we're up against <laughs> let's, here. let's zoom in a little bit. You can't, I don't know if, yeah, there you go. It is, uh, it's pretty breezy out there, bud. It certainly is. Uh, I think maybe breeziest, possibly breeziest of the week uh, as you're setting off, 35 possibly, is that what yeah, you're Yeah, something like that. It's funny, everyone's talking about this tropical cyclone. We can see the most breeze this entire leg, you know, two hours after we start. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's happened before. It's yep. certainly happened before. Yeah. It's, uh, and it, and this, this, the, start, the start of this leg has decided this leg and before as well. You know, first one out, first one into the low, first one uh, off on the, on the train. It's a little different this time around because you're not headed, you know, around yeah. the Southern Ocean. Yeah. Um, do you see it as crucial to, to be out in front, or is this more about saving your boat the first couple nights? Uh, I think it's complex enough that you want to kind of just stay in the game and be able to make some decisions later on. Um, so we're pretty hectic getting out of here. You know, just the import course is going to be an absolute monster. And then, um, you know, plenty of wind shadows, Table Bay, Lion's Head kind of along the way. And then, uh, you know, be beating up wind for a little bit and some pretty big breeze. So um, I think kind of taking it easy on the gear and staying in check is going to be the uh, going to be the focus for us at least, kind of getting out of here. I mean, the good thing is, is being up wind, the, the separations won't, you know, don't get crazy as far as, because you're, you know, you're going 10 knots or whatever it is. So yeah. um, you wake up, you know, chances are no one's going to be 10, 10 or 20 miles ahead of anyone else. Uh, conceivably, you know, you never know. There's a little bit of discrepancy in the routing. Uh, but, yeah, by and large, you know, you're not seeing 20s as far as boat speeds are concerned. So that kind of mitigates some of the uh, some of the potential leverage. But, yeah. And, and what about the big seas and the big winds? You haven't seen them yet in the boat. Um, even in training, I don't think you've seen 40 knots, right? Yeah, yeah, a couple times here and there. But, uh, you know, the big thing for us with the boat is going to be the current. You know, not tonight, but uh, tomorrow night uh, we'll be crossing the Agulhas and... Uh, not as much breeze as it originally looked like, but um, you know we could still see, you know, some pretty some pretty massive square square waves, and we'll see exactly how hard we can push the boat. Now the current, though, it's 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 uh it's pretty narrow here where you'll where you'll cross it. I mean, I think it's only thirty or thirty five miles. Uh, it's a little, a little wider than that. You know, it, well, where our routing has us where crossing now, it's like you know fifty to seventy five miles. Um, you know, <laughs> nor, nor, northeast current against the southwest wind, so. And, um, and and where probably more racing boats have been destroyed by big yeah. waves than they were in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So, you know, it's one of the big currents of the world, and, you know, it's between us and Abu Dhabi, so we got to cross it. So we know these boats are a little slower upwind and a little tougher than the uh, than the 70s and certainly, you know, uh, some of the, uh, you know, the Rambler and things like that that you sail, where you're always slowing them down, going upwind and big stuff. Yeah. Um, are these boats as much of a danger for slamming, or, or, or is it not that big a deal? Oh, it's still a big deal. Yeah. You still got to keep them from jumping yeah. off waves. Yeah, for sure. For sure, definitely. I mean, they're not as delicate as some of the other race boats that have been built in the past. Um, but, you know, that just doesn't mean you use them and abuse them by any means. So. Yeah, it's not an IOR 50. That is correct. Um, so, um, in big waves and, and, and this this nasty stuff, where where, where do the real risk, risk, risks of breakage come in? I mean, could we see a rig fall in, the, in these waves? Could we, you know, uh, could you know, you have a repair J two from the other day? Do we see jibs get destroyed before you guys even get to the uh, get to the calm stuff? Yeah, you know, we we could, and and that's and that's a big part of it. You know, um, not only sail preservation for the entire race, but sail preservation for the leg. You know, so um, we're we try to take it easy on the gear. Um, you know, sticks. That's a whole other thing. You know, obviously, you wouldn't wish that upon anybody. Um, but it's it's certainly a possibility given kind of what we're going into. Um, but you know it's always a possibility. So uh, you just kind of do the best of what you got. That's going to happen. It'd be nice if it happens in a, you know, a day or two, so then the other boat could rejoin as well. Um, There's always that. So uh, uh, I guess you know, Charlie, it's not. It was really interesting to meet your 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 you know the Alamedica principal who, who mm -hmm. started this whole thing. Uh, Shem, is that his yep. name? Yeah, Shem. Yep. Yep. Um, and you guys seem to be really. I don't know. I mean, I, you're a genuine guy. I know you, you couldn't lie to save your life. You went to go see these kids at the hospital, and you're really into it. I mean, this isn't yeah. just you yeah, kissing yeah. a sponsor's ass. Yeah. No, it's 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 a crazy thing. You know, it's a world that I am uh, I'm not really a part of. You know, I mean, I don't I don't have kids. I'm well, your dad's before. a dentist, though. Well, yeah, a I great, mean, the best dentist in all of the Northeast, yeah. by the way. Yeah. There you go. Um, you know, going to the dentist isn't really Hi, as doc. emotional as going to the uh, you know the ICU. I'll tell you that. Yeah. But, 
you know, I don't have kids. It's not a world that, you know, I'm a part of, you know, at this, at this stage of my life. And I've been fortunate enough to be, you know, pretty healthy. So hospitals aren't a place I hang out in. And, uh, you know, going there was really eye-opening, you know. And, and I'm kind of excited to kind of continue to visit these places as we travel around the world. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, you're pretty lucky to get <laughs> such an interesting yeah. sponsor. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're not having to do all, you know, sort of the, some of the sillier things that people have to do sometimes. But, yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's interesting. Jim's a... Uh, you know, he's a doctor, yeah. you know, and I mean, he was a practicing... And a racer. Yeah, well, race, sailboat racer, uh, rally car racer, you know, he's a pretty intense guy. Um, but, you know, he, he was a doctor in his early life, you know, before he, you know, kind of helped start Alpha Medica. Um, so he had a lot of experience, you know, in and around the hospitals, and, you know, he didn't change tax really until later in his career. So. Let me ask you, this is, this is your first... I think your first real exposure to the to the real commercial end of the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, you've done a lot of sailing in very awesome boats, but for private owners. Yep. Um, and there are certainly there's a lot of circus aspect to it. Whether yep. it's the media on the boats, whether it's all the all the press conferences and all this stuff here, and all mm-hmm. the dog and pony show, is that d- detracting from the racing experience for you? Um, it's a little bit of a chicken egg, you know, you got to kind of realize, you know, why you're here, you know, we're here and able to do what we love because of that aspect of it. Um, you know, sometimes, um, you know, for instance, you know, whether it's, you know, choosing what sales to use because we have to go out and do a pro-am in 30 knots or, you know, there are certain times when there are compromises, but, um, you know, you can't really have one without the other. So, you know, it, it's different, but I, I don't know that, um, you know, it could you know, that it could look any different, if that makes any sense, you know. Does a guy like you with pretty much no ego still enjoy the limelight a little bit? The limelight? Um, Signing autographs? It's weird, I'll tell you that. You know, someone's like, hey, can you sign my hat? I'm like, Jesus, that is <laughs> absolutely insane to me. But sure, you know, yeah, no problem. Wait till they ask you to sign their tits. Yeah, I don't know about that. My wife, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's only happened to me once, and I didn't really want to get near him. Anyway. Jeez. Um, <laughs> hi, Shem. Um, <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. That's all right. Uh, what else I got? Oh, what, what 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 would you be happy with at the end of this leg? You know, I think you know Bob Becking's a pretty smart guy. You know, sitting at the skipper's press conference yesterday, he kind of analyzed how he'd feel. You know, depending upon how he finished, and I think he said seventh, unlucky, sixth, hey, at least we beat someone. You know, fifth, top five, not bad. I think fourth, he was going to be disappointed if he wasn't on the podium. And, you know, third, all right, we made it. Second, shit, we almost won. And I think first he said, ah, we're probably more lucky than good. You know, and I think that's a pretty good way to sum it up. He's a wise guy. And, uh, yeah, th- th- that sounds about right. He made a comment uh, a-, a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, about these, being worried that these boats have the capability of pitch polling when you get into the deep south. Now, this, the way the weather's setting up right now, it doesn't you're not, it doesn't look like you're going to be running in big stuff in this leg mm-hmm. until you get to the hurricane if it ever develops. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that was based on his early, you know, earlier training in big air. Do you see that potentiality at all, um, given how bow up these boats are? Um, but just getting getting overtaken by a big wave and uh, having some risk, or was that just bow getting and trying to get in people's heads? Potentially, um, you know, we you know, done very little sailing on Volvo 70s, obviously. Um, but they seem more bow up, you know, and, and, and freer than those boats did. And those are some of the comms, you know, from the guys on our boat have, who have spent a lot of time sailing the 70s. Um, you know, big waves are big waves. It's always a possibility. Um, yeah, the deck step rig is pretty interesting when you think about the whole thing raking forward. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's possible. But, uh, you know, it's not something I've found to be a problem in any of our training. Well, I have a request from some friends in the Melvis 32 that right around when World starts, we give you guys a, a live call and talk oh, to right. a couple of 32 guys yeah, on board because you, you, you got a few uh, hardcore 32 yeah, guys no, on board. Yeah, no, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be I good think, for uh, sure. aren't you a, weren't you a world champion in the 32? No, no, no. Was no, that no. Tao? That, uh, he was, yeah. Uh-huh. He was sailing on the uh, Goombe Smash uh-huh. with Dougie. Yeah. With Dougie, Dougie. Yeah, taking it home. So maybe we'll be able to do that uh, during this leg? Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know how it all works. Someone just sends an email that says, hey, you got to call at 3. As long as I, I have say, your right. permission, I'll make the rest of it. Work. i got to get up at 3. No, no, no. That'd be great. Charlie, that's awesome. Look, have a great time. It's, it's great to see you guys. You look like you have, I, honestly, you guys are, are maybe the loosest of everyone out there. You all good. seem like you're having a good time. And yeah, nice. I think that's what matters in this thing until... Until it's, the pressure starts yeah. ratcheting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, There's some time left for that. That's part of it. we got to go stack our boat. Yeah, thanks, brother. Appreciate Adios. it.